Next thing, let me find the hooks for tying the 64 Impala. When I did my Umqua Live thing a couple weeks ago, I got my desk like all cleaned off and it's already a mess again and I can't find stuff. A Ziggy Gnarly, yeah, that, I think so. Steven Gnarly, Ziggy Gnarly. Man, I saw, it was either Steven Marley or Ziggy Marley in Seattle and it was one of the worst shows I've ever seen. It was horrible. It was at the zoo, which was walking distance from where I used to live, so it was cool to walk over, but it was, like, super boring. It was not a fun show. I think we left after, like, 45 minutes. Uh, Alright, so, yeah, I'll throw one of these guys in here, right? Here's a... Is this the one I tied? That's a commercial one? No, that's the one I tied. It's my, my practice one, right? That's a 64 Impala. So my other low riding stonefly is the El Camino. It's a cool low rider if you see one that's like lowered. Um, so this fly came out after and it's kind of similar concept, like a low riding stonefly pattern. So I actually Googled what is the most desirable vehicle to turn into a low rider and it's the, the six foe. So there you go. Um, this guy, I like to tie it pretty big. I like to fish larger salmon flies, like this is a size four, and this would kind of be my go-to size for it. I, a lot of you know I used to guide in the Gunnison Gorge in Colorado. Uh, I'd put the salmon fly hatch down there up against the salmon fly hatch anywhere. It's absolutely incredible. Um, and the first few days of the hatch is like mind-blowingly good dry fly fishing. That's one of the places where I used to fish little pizza slices and hot dogs and little foam people, uh, all sorts of dumb stuff. And just like, I would fish like size two Ot Royal Wolfs just because the fish would eat it. Um, so I liked fishing really big salmon fly patterns too, like this. Uh, this thing's good, I would say between like a size two and an eight. Um, I would say like four, six is kind of the, the norm for it, right? All right, so this hook that I'm tying it on, same hook that I tied my Dancing Ricky on. I actually like this hook better than what I originally was using for this. I used to use just like a curved shank hopper hook or something. Uh, this is the Umqua, that, the 106, the U106 hook in a size 4. Um, got my Ultra Thread 140 again. This is fluorescent orange. Get my thread started up there near the eye. It's always a good idea to lay down a tight thread base. Undo that little bit. About there. So now the whole hook shank has a good foundation to tie our fly on. I'm going to take a couple open wraps just to back there. First step with this guy, tie in that tail. Uh, this is orange, round, rubber, size medium. Uh, the bard, I, I like the, the black and white bard. Cut one strand out. I'm gonna double this over my thread, right? In my Umqua video the other day, I made it a point to uh, tell you how important it is to double materials over your thread like this just makes for a much more durable fly they're less likely to pull out or fall out um i there's some guy that i've seen on instagram that's got like thirty thousand followers and I, he'll just tie it in like by the end right and it's that's just like super lazy and just like a total beginner fly tying mistake so whenever possible tie a material in by the center like that and then f give it like maybe one not like a wrap there and then you can position it, tie it back down to where you want it to go. About like that. Right, if you like yank on one of them, you're not gonna pull it out. All right, so there's a the tail, 64 Impala. I'm gonna take and advance my thread up to that little bend in the shank, up there about two thirds of the way up the fly. Uh, I'm gonna tie in my under, like whatever underbelly, the bottom part portion of the fly here. I'll show you, right? You can see it's foam on the underside and foam on the over the back. I need to find my gray foam. There it is. This is dark gray, two millimeter foam. 
Uh, I've bought like tons of foam from like Michaels or Hobby Lobby or something. This dark gray stuff is actually like a fly tying color. I've never found it in a craft store. So if you want to do salmon flies and you want this dark gray, I think you got to get it from your fly shop. Um, yeah, all right, so I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna go maybe just a little bit narrower than the width of my hook gap. Hi, Britta, how are you? That's a lot of exclamation marks. All right, foam strip. That's a little wider, I think, than I should have gone, so I'm just gonna trim it down a tiny bit thinner. That's a little better. When I'm cutting foam too, uh, I don't know where it went, there it is. I usually use this paper cutter. It's super handy for cutting foam. Uh, but my scissors are right in front of me, so I'm using them. Britta and Justin are both tuning in. Look at that, nice face trim. Yeah, I don't know if you even got to see my chin when I worked at Avid Angler, Britta, like eight or nine years ago. All right, I'm gonna tie this guy in kind of right by the bend in this little hook there. On the underside, which is a little bit awkward. What I'm gonna do is actually kind of bury this. This is gonna create just a little bit of a bulky underbody that I'm gonna then flip the foam forward and wrap over it, you'll see in a minute. So I'm just doing a few open wraps to kind of secure this. Make sure it stays positioned on the underside of the hook here. That thing works awesome, thanks, yeah. Thanks, John. All right, all right, so that is where the tail kind of begins, where I just tied that to. Now I'm gonna take and make more wraps going back to that little bend in the hook shank. Bury that a little better. That's decent. I'm gonna go do pretty much the same thing down the top of the hook shank now. Back to my gray foam. Make sure that this is gonna be long enough. I'll cut it that way just in case. All right, that's uh, about equal to the hook gap there. So same deal, tie it in there. One wrap, kind of secure it, make sure it's positioned where I want. want that guy also tied to the same spot. I don't want to be able to see the orange under body, you know, the thread that's just like tying the tail down. So a few wraps right there. That should be pretty good. Yep, that looks good. So now I'm going to probably go back down this just to kind of compress that foam a little bit more. Again, the reason I tie that in all the way up here is just to create a little bit of bulk. Otherwise, it's just like nothing underneath the two layers of foam which still works, but I kind of prefer this way. There we go. All right, so now that I've got those two foam layers tied in there, I'm gonna pull one forward. Actually, I'll do the bottom. Well, what do I wanna do, bottom or top? I'll do the top one first. Pull the top one forward. Right about where the hook has the little bend in it. Okay, so there's the top part, right? Pull the bottom guy forward. Tie that down in the same spot there. Right, and at this point, I'm actually gonna cut the top layer off. I don't need that for the time being. We do want to keep that bottom piece though. The bottom's going to form that front segment under there. Uh, in my tying a lot, I kind of do this series of X wraps thing with foam. I really like the segmented look that it gives and uh, it creates a more durable fly. So I'll show you that now. Yeah, thanks Keith, mind of an engineer. 
Uh, all right, so X wraps, right? One diagonal wrap back and then one perpendicular wrap over everything. You can see you get a segment there. We'll do a few more of these guys all the way back to where the tail sticks out. Right? All right, do one more around the back there. All right, so now you can see I've got the little diagonal wraps going to the back there. Jay, you said we can get these through Emco. Yeah, you can. Emco sells this guy, the 64 Impala, so your local fly shop could order it from Emco. All right, and what I'm doing here, right, I'm making that diagonal wrap over the top, and then that perpendicular wrap is following uh, the perpendicular wrap along the bottom. So what we end up with here is this really cool segmented body. You can see the series of X wraps over the top there, neat and clean and pretty even. And the underside just has that perpendicular wrap for the segments of the fly. So that's how you tie that rear portion there. The little underbody, like I was saying, is kind of important. That's how you build up a little bit of bulk underneath there. Otherwise, it's just sort of smashed against a skinny hook shank. That's hot. Thanks, Josh. You need to cool down then. Okay, next step. What is the next step? We'll tie in some pearl midge flash. Thanks, Buckfly. I use pearl midge flash a lot for like underwings. I like it. It's a, like little miniature crystal flash. Um, it doesn't. It's not too like too bulky. It doesn't add a whole lot of. It doesn't make a fly too busy, but it does add a little bit of sparkle, which is kind of nice. This is a uh, one, two, three. That's four strands right there. I'm gonna take four strands and double it over my thread, right? So about like that. You can pinch it with two separate hands, you know, whatever, like that. Grab it, doubled over. Take and flip that up. Just drop it right down on the top of that segment there, where we've been tying everything off. Got a few. You know, two wraps in between, nice and tight, and then just pull them all back, throw maybe like one or two more wraps that'll just sort of orient them so they're wanting to sort of go that way. They're being kind of unruly though, but that's all right. Lengthwise, I want these to be about, oh, I don't know, maybe a little bit longer than the bend of the hook. So go back to like there, that looks good. Durability and looks, thanks on the fly cast. All right, so there's our underwing, it's still standing straight up. I don't really care because the moose body hair that's going over the top of it will smash it down. Moose body hair, I use this a lot too. I like it, it's a good dark color, it's straight. The fibers don't flare too much, which is nice. Uh, this is the tail on the hippie stomper. Uh, I don't know where else I use it. Some of my flies, I think. I like working with it. Buckfly, I'm one of the idiots that didn't double over before, not anymore. Yeah, well, there you go. Made made it worth watching. <sighs> Little chunk, right? This is, uh, eh, that's not quite enough. <sighs> I'll throw more in my hair stacker in a minute. Want to get the little fuzz, the little under fibers out of there. Alright, little hair packer, stacker, not packer. Throw it in there. And that's not quite enough, so I need to cut a little bit bigger chunk. A little more. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, there we go. Got the fuzz cleaned out of that. We'll throw it in my hair stacker here. Stack it up. It's pretty good. Nice and even. A little bit of fuzz in there that I didn't quite clean out, but that's all right. Right, so now you can sort of see, I know it's blurry because it's an iPhone live video, but the tips are nice and straight on that guy. Uh, I want these wings, whatever, this, this wing to be like about even with the bend of the hook. So kind of position it in your fingers there so you're roughly where you want it. You just sort of line it up on top. Lengthwise, I'm pretty happy with where I'm holding it there, so I'm just going to lay it right on top of that pearl midge flash. Switch hands that are holding that material. 
take one just sort of soft soft loop over it make a second so now it's secured I haven't cranked on it to flare it or hold it in really tight but that soft loop will at least kind of hold it in there that's pretty good so I'm gonna go more tension on it all right so that's pretty secure got a decent flare out of it still moose doesn't flare a ton that's about what I want for this fly I'm gonna cut these tag ends Secure these here. Eight minutes left before it ends. Just restart. All right, thanks, Josh. Let's see if I can just get it done in eight minutes. All right. So there's that. The gray chunk that we cut off earlier before we tied the wings in. I'm going to tie that back in now. One thing I do with that, I cut a little notch in it. That allows the wing to stand up a little bit tie that on top. It also just looks cooler. About like that. Some looks right there. Could you use something other than moose? Would elk or deer? Yeah, it would flare a lot more, but it would be kind of similar. If you didn't put a ton of tension on it and really flare it, that would work. All right, next step here is the little orange indicator piece that's on top of the fly. About the same width as the layer underneath it, right? Orange. I cut this guy a little crooked, but it'll be all right. Good enough. Throw that right on top. Hold it down. Okay. Orange layer on top there. Throw some legs on the side now. Those same legs. I'm going to cut two, two chunks out of there. Two legs, whatever. And I'm going to put a knot in two locations here. This is going to be the rear leg and the middle leg. Pull it tight, right? So there's one, one little knee joint. Flip it around, tie another little knee joint right there. You want them like an inch apart or so. You can kind of see, maybe, about like that. Do another one and then tie these in. go. So there's our little knee joint tied in the legs there. I'm going to tie it in the center on my side of the fly. And then the same deal on the other side, right in the center there. This one's a little crazy, but if you can kind of manipulate that little knot that you tied, and that will sometimes change the orientation of where the leg is pointing, right? Ideally, the leg kind of points out and down, but these ones are going kind of crazy. Uh, it's all right. I don't think the fish knows what the legs are supposed to look like. But yeah, see how I just flipped that around? You, you can just like cause the little knot to rotate a tiny bit just by pulling on it, and that'll usually fix it. All right, this is not the right dubbing. There it is. This is like some, I don't know what this is. I think it's ice dub. It feels like ice dub. It's like bright orange and sparkly. I tie this, uh, use this stuff at this tie-in point to kind of cover it up because there's a bunch going on and like a big chunk of thread there. So I just like to hide it under some dubbing. Uh, one thing that I think a lot of salmon flies have going on that I think is kind of incorrect is they'll be too orange. You know, like people see the neon orange in a salmon fly and think like, oh, they're just going to use neon orange foam for the whole thing. Whereas they're typically like overall kind of a dark gray bug with orange highlights. And the most noticeable orange parts are where the legs meet the body, I believe. So that's why I'll throw that sparkly orange dubbing right there. That's everything at that tie-in point. I'm going to pull stuff out of the way. Root beer, that's... No, it's not root beer, Brad. It's like some bright orange. I don't know. All right, so now I'm up here right behind the hook eye. I'm going to tie that bottom, the belly of the fly down, right? Create that segment there. A few wraps to hold it in. Now I'll do the top layer right in the same spot, kind of just like a sandwich against each other. Like that. Now the antennas, sandwiched between the gray and the orange foam. 
like I was saying before, double this over your thread. Don't tie it in by the ends. It's a little awkward when you're trying to get them to face forward, but you can still finagle it in there and make it do what you want. So there's one, there's two wraps between it. I'm gonna go around the other side like that, right? So now they're sort of pointing forward like that, right? Now I'm just gonna hold down those guys with the orange layer. About like that. Orange layer there, secure that, and now I'm just gonna tie two more legs in on either side of the fly, and then we're done. Right, so I'll take one full length piece and just tie the little knot in the middle. About like that. Do another one. Right, so that little joint. Uh, I want this little leg to be pointing kind of backwards there, right? And I'm not gonna tie it in so it's like right next to the end. I like to leave just a little stub kind of sticking forward. Um, just so it's less likely to pull out. I like tying this fly with the uh, three pairs of legs, like a real stone fly. Um, can you kind of see? So there's the leg I just tied in right there. There's like just a little stub right there that I leave. You could do uh, four pairs, you know, you could do two sets like I did on the rear portion of the fly there, but I kind of like the look of having just three, three pairs. Not like that. Everything's tied in and secured that I need to be messing with right now. I need to cut this bottom layer of foam off. Cut that nice and close. Pull these guys out of the way. We'll try to grab a hold of that gray layer that I just cut and try to bury it just a little bit better just so the fly's not quite as sloppy right there. undo. Control Z. Alright, there we go. Alright, pull everything out of the way there, whip finish it, trim a couple things, and we're pretty much done. Again, a good four wrap whip finish is all you need. You don't need to do like two whip finishes with eight wraps and then a bunch of glue. Alright, so we'll get those guys straightened out. Trim this so it's a little longer than the eye of the hook there. I'm going to take the orange layer on top, cut that guy so it's about the same length. Some of these legs are going crazy different directions. You can kind of mess with the little knot that you tied there before you glue it, and sometimes you can get them oriented so they're all kind of pointing down. Um, yeah, what's up, Angela? Neighbor across the street, checking it out. All right. Uh, that's about it. That's my 64 Impala salmon fly right there. Great fly. I'd love to go fish this guy on the Henry's Fork in Idaho for the salmon fly hatch. Um, this thing crushes in Colorado on the Gunnison. I bet Byers Canyon on the Colorado. It's probably killer there. Who knows where else. But uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I got a minute and 30 seconds remaining. There's still over 50 of you hanging out. Thank you guys for watching. Super psyched to tie these two flies for the first time I've ever demoed them. So that's cool. Henley Ashman, what's up? Uh, yeah, Bjorn, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, that's it. You can get both of these from Umpqua, uh, your local fly shop and get them. You can message me if you got questions about how to tie them. Uh, if I don't mess it up, I'll try to save the video this time and keep it on my Instagram account so you guys can check it out. Um, yeah, cheers to you guys. Thanks for watching. One more Moscow mule. All right. Great. Thank you all.